Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're taking a short trip through the history books to see what history might teach us about today. The year was 27 BC, and Emperor Augustus was the emperor of Rome. Their money was the Roman denarius, made of 98% pure silver. The pure coinage remained until 64 AD, when there was the Great Fire of Rome, which destroyed close to 60,000 buildings, almost 90% of the dwellings in the city. Nero was the emperor at the time, and it took a lot of money to rebuild the city. In order to afford the rebuilding, Nero made monetary reforms, which reduced the silver content in the coins to 93%. Emperor Vespasian reduced the silver content to 89%. Marcus Aurelius reduced the silver to 75%, and Septimus Severus reduced the silver to 50%. Caracalla introduced the double denarius, which had a face value that was double that of the single denarius, but it was only one and a half times larger than the single denarius coin. By the time Gallienus was in power, from 260 AD to 268 AD, the denarius had a meager 2.5% silver content. These coins were made of bronze and had a thin coating of silver, which tended to wear away very quickly. It was during the time of Gallienus despite a number of military victories, that important provinces in the Roman Empire began to splinter away from the empire. It was also a time of plague. From 249 AD to 262 AD, the plague of Cyprian, which lasted 13 years, caused widespread shortages across the empire, and was one of the major contributing factors to the eventual demise of the Roman Empire. Rome was the epicenter of trade in Europe, which included grain, marble, textiles, timber, metals, animals, olive oil, and wine. As these coins had less and less silver, soldiers in the empire demanded higher pay. Prices for commodities started to increase, and eventually runaway inflation took hold. By 265 AD, there was less than 0.5% silver left in the coins, and prices had increased a 1,000%. Only mercenary soldiers were paid in gold. The trifecta of rising administrative costs which caused soaring taxes, runaway inflation, and worthless money caused much of Rome's trade to collapse. Now, I totally understand why governments the world over are printing money in response to the current pandemic. In some ways, I think they have little choice. A number of people have postulated that we're not in an inflationary period, that prices are not rising out of control, so the printing of money is appropriate. Remember, inflation's an average. I don't expect prices for leather purses to start soaring anytime soon. We have seen prices for oil drop in the short term as the level of economic activity fell in March and April. What will happen when there are shortages of certain food items? What will happen when there are shortages of building materials like steel or ceramic tiles? Will those prices go up? In places, they already are, and they already have gone up. You see, if printing money were the path of prosperity, then Zimbabwe and Venezuela would be the richest nations on earth, and they're not. So here we are. In the year 2020 AD, we have global trade splintering into local trade, we have plagues, and we have printing of money on a scale we've never seen in human history. Every time this has been tried in human history, the path to prosperity has been interrupted by economic collapse. We saw it in Argentina in the 1980s, in Germany in the 1920s, in the United States during the American Revolution, in France during the 1790s, in Greece during the Second World War in the Soviet Union from 1922 to 1924. Folks, we've seen this movie before. We know the ending. The actors are different in this remake of the movie, but the plot's basically the same. I'm calling this movie The Return of Caesar's Coin Stamping Machine, Part 29. When newly printed money is dropped from the sky, it's not falling uniformly, or even fairly on the population. It's going to some people first, and then to others not at all. And when the unfairness of this wealth transfer becomes visible, as it has in the past, the result has almost always brought armed conflict. The headlines this morning tell the story of economic recovery that's now underway. The economy is the result of output of its people, not the printing of money. When people are sitting at home collecting a check from the government, they're not producing. But that check breeds dependence. It stifles creativity. I know that I would not be thinking hard about business strategy, if I was getting paid to sit at home and watch movies. In fact, I don't even want that check. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day.
Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.